Hi, my name is Paul and welcome to the Learning Net. Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to connect a physical switch to a router that is running inside uh, a piece of software and that software is known as GNS3 which is the one and only routing emulator software that you can buy uh, and I can install a logical router inside this piece of software and I can connect that to a physical piece of hardware um, on, my, uh, on my desk. Okay, so in this example, I've got a 2950 series switch. I've got my laptop. I've got a cloud, which we are going to configure to allow this to work. And I have a, um, a logical router inside this program known as GNS3. And we're going to connect them all together um, on the same physical subnet. So 192.168.1.100, 192.168.1.1, and 192.168.1.200. So they're all on the same subnet. So um, once I've configured this, I should be able to ping from this switch to that router. Okay, and that router is a piece of software. It is not hardware. This is the physical hardware. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first thing we need to do is uh, launch GNS3. Okay, I've already added the router. So what I need to do to make this router talk to my physical switch on my desk um, is to add a cloud. And all I need to do is drag the cloud in. Um, sorry, that's just slightly out of shot there. There is a cloud option within GNS3 at the bottom there. And I just drag that cloud in. I right click on the cloud and I go configure. Window will open. I just click on the first option that it gives me. In this instance, it's C4, but you guys might have C1. Uh, and then if you look in this window here, you can see all your interfaces that your PC may have. Okay, now I've got a couple of loopbacks, so we're going to ignore those for now. I'm looking for the physical interface itself. And here we go, network adapter, gigabit network connection, blah, 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 local host. That's the one that I want. I'm going to add that to the cloud, and then I'm going to click on apply, and go OK. So that's the cloud configured. I've already configured the router with the IP address that I said I was going to give it. Uh, this router should have that IP address. So all I need to do now is connect the router to the cloud and that physical interface on my laptop. Okay, now they connected. I can right click on there and go into um, Dynamips, which is the console, as you can see there. This is the um, logical console port for that router within GNS3. Click on Enable. Okay, show IP interface brief just to confirm that I have already um, configured this interface with that IP address, and there we can see it. Fast Ethernet 00, IP address of dot 100, and it is all up, up. Okay, excellent. Uh, let's take a look at switch. Here's the switch on my desk. It's connected to my serial port COM4. Um, and I simply type in the password. Go enable. Okay, and if I do a show IP interface brief on here, I've also configured this with an IP address that is on the same subnet. And in fact, if I just want to double check my PC as well, I can. Um, and there you can see my PC has an IP address of 1.1. So technically now, if I go from this router, I should be able to ping my PC, and I should certainly be able to ping that switch. 192.168.1.200 was the IP address of that switch. And there we go. So we just go back to our diagram. I've pinged from this interface through this cloud, which happens to be attached to my PC, onto a physical piece of hardware, a Cisco 2950 series switch, which means I can extend this um, simulator, uh, not only um, you know the number of logical routers that I can add, but I can physically connect it to a lot of hardware. So in my lab, I can add more and more switches. And in GNS3, I can add more and more routers. I can just drag them in as I need them and create a, a very, um, I can simulate, should I say, a large um, wide area network. I can also add things like firewalls, uh, the Pixel, the ASA, I can add Juniper routers. So this can just grow and grow and grow and I can then connect that back to a physical piece of um, hardware on my lab. Um, in fact, if you think about it, there should be no reason why I can't connect this switch to my real network and get on the internet from this router. In fact, let's do that. Let's have a look at this diagram. If I add my router, that's the router that I use in my lab to connect me to the internet. It's just an 857 router. I connect that to my switch, as long as this, this interface is in the same VLAN as those, 
and it's on the same subnet, which it is, okay, this ADSL line is connected to an ISP, and it does get me on the internet. If I do all of that, there should be no reason why this router can't ping a network address on the actual internet, which in itself is quite amazing. Because again, I can go in G inside GNS3, add hundreds of routers if I like, do all sorts of routing protocols uh, and all sorts of configurations that I like, and I can get those routers to talk um, to a, an IP address um, on the internet, which again is a pretty useful tool. This is fantastic. Okay, so to do that, what do I need to do? Um, let's have a quick think. Um, well, I guess I need to configure this r this interface on this logical router inside GNS3 um, with a path to the internet. So he'll need a default gateway or a default route, should I say, uh, and everything else. So the easiest way for me to do that would be just to take the interface IP address that I've given it, the 1.100, the 1 remove that, and say, why don't you get an IP address from this router's DHCP server? Because that's what I've done with my PC. My PC is getting his IP address from this router, as most networks do. Okay, so I'm going to configure this router to get an IP address from this router, and then this router should be able to ping something on the Internet. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm back inside my GNS3. As you can see, I'm on Dynamips. Uh, and if I go conf t um, interface fa0 slash 0, and let's say IP address this time, we want to get it from the, the uh, DHCP server. Okay, if I end that, hopefully I'm going to get an IP address. Give it a few seconds, show IP interface brief. And there we go, the IP address has changed. Remember, I physically set it to uh, 100. It has now got an IP address of 192.168.1.19. Um, and if I have a look at my PC, uh, where is it? There it is there. We can see my PC has a default gateway of 1.252. So in theory, he should be able to ping 192.168.1.252. Please work. And there we go, I can ping him, which also means, in theory, now that I have all the um, parameters set from the DHCP server, I should be able to ping Google, for example, ping www.google.com. And there we go. This is from inside GNS3. This is from a, a, um, a logical piece of hardware, a piece of software, sorry. And as I say, I can add more and more um, uh, routers to this design. And all of those routers, if I set up my routing protocols correctly, if I, if I set up my routing, either dynamic or static, whatever I choose, I can then get those routers to talk to a router on the Internet, which is quite remarkable. Um, in fact, let's just do a trace just to make sure that I'm not kidding. Uh, do a trace uh, to www.google. Why not? And I should see the path that it takes from my uh, classroom uh, here in London all the way through to Google from this logical piece of software inside GNS3. Okay, so it's saying it's going to its gateway, which is my physical routers. Okay, so I go inside BT and all the path BT is going to take to get to Google. Till eventually, there we go, it pops out at Google. And that's Google's physical IP address, 216-239-59.105. Quite Remarkable, I think it's a fantastic tool, and I recommend that all training network engineers, in fact, most real network engineers, have this tool to simulate some of their own environments before they go live. Okay, well, that's that. As I say, my name is Paul. I'd like to thank you for your time, and sincerely hope you choose the Learning Net, your IT training center of choice. Thank you.